the AFN Fishing Show go top to bottom in this action-packed adventure that takes us from Queensland to South Australia. Watch awesome mangrove jack surface takes before heading south to watch frenzied jigging action in our Southern Ocean waters. Jump on board as mangrove jack guru Jason Medcalf takes us to some of his favourite haunts. If watching cranky fish eat surface lures is your type of fishing, then this one is for you. Go, Jace! Go, Jace! As soon as it landed down, eh, little fella. <laughs> Look at that. He was on the other side of that mm. rock, though. Woo! Nice. Gel and stuff. Woo! That's your little fella. Check that out, Nigel. That's what we came for. Mm. Sweet! Look at that. Cranky. Cranky fish. He, uh, One of your friends. See how far he come out of the water. They just virtually launch themselves. I've had them completely out of the water with the popper in their mouth. It's just, they're just a great little fish. First fish of the morning, mate, and um, sun's just coming up. Our feet are already wet because we've had to get out and push. We've come through some pretty nasty stuff. Back in nowhere, but we've got a good tool for the job today. Mate, uh, if we're going to go and do some exploring in some pretty nasty country, what better boat than my uh, tough old polycraft? So it's seen some uh, tough times, this boat, mate. You and I have been in some pretty nasty stuff before, but it's still floating. Uh, and it floats in about this much. There's two of us running around in it. It's made for the stuff like this, casting it nasty fish in mm. backwaters of nowhere. Mate, I, I reckon there wouldn't be a polycraft out there that has seen as much shallow, rocky, nasty stuff as this one. This one's nearly eight years old and it's come to this place where we are now in the baffle, which is, as you've already noticed, full of rock, full of shallow, nasty, nasty stuff. stuff. Bounces all around, tough and quiet. Can't hear a thing. And when we're doing, you know, we're chasing fish on surface, so you don't want them hearing any hull slapping or noise. Mate, nice, quiet boat. Now, that one was the first one. I reckon we might get a few more today. Still under it, still under it. Oh! <coughs> oh, yes! Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 Gold. Whoop. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Look Jackson surface. And how many times do you have a go oh, at that? Push. Just keep, keep working it and keep working it. The heart's going <laughs> and it makes you want to go faster. Hey buddy. You watch this. Hello. Oh. <laughs> that is gold. This is why we put the effort in. We've got the, a fair bit of effort when I say that because we're in very shallow water. Bouncing off rocks, across the shallows, Nige. That's the reward. That's it, mate. Get, right. get to see something like a predator, like a jack, eat a surface lure. You go, what else is better than that? Mm, it's going to be a tough call. A tough call, <laughs> mate, isn't it? Hey? Oh! Jeez. Oh. Go hard. <laughs> oh. Speaking of big mullet getting chased. Oh. That's an impressive oh, oh. Get him up, get him up, get him up. Oh. Oh. Did ya? Did ya? Tell you what, mate. That was a, a big fish. fish. <laughs> it was a big fish. Straighten the two reels. <laughs> well, this is one of the joys of when you're doing this sort of thing is you never know how big the fish are going to be. And that jack that just uh, straightened those hooks was big. It was a cracker. I worked in on the shallows, pulled it out on the edge of the deeper water, and just paused it and paused it. I was watching Nidals, 
and then that fish just smashed it. You see it, you see the hit knife? You're gonna hear it. But uh, he had me in the rocks, so I had to go hard, and that's what happens, you know. You gotta go hard, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. So oh yeah. Keep doing it. Now, Jace, I noticed when you were fishing up the front of the boat here, you've got two rods which you're alternating quite a lot. Different style lures on them, a pencil style popper and also cup face popper. So what's your thinking, day like this, different retrieves, different approaches? Exactly, Nige. One of the things that I find when, you, when you're fishing, and you, you know, we've come out specifically to catch jacks on poppers. Yep. So I have two favourite poppers. So what happens is I have little areas that I really like to walk the dog, yep. and I have little areas that I really like the cup face. If I don't have two rods rigged, I'm never going to pick up that cup face where I think I should fish it. So I'm, I always end up getting stuck using the one rod yeah. and the one lure. And I might not be happy and 100% confident in what I'm doing in that spot. Yeah. So hence the reason I have the two rods, the two poppers. Yeah. So when I get to a spot, especially right now, we've got a little bit of breeze now. I really like the, the walk the dog on a nice, smooth, calm, in the back of the snag where there's no ripples because it walks and it creates a beautiful bow wave. But as soon as you get a bit of ripple or it needs a little bit more love, a little bit more life, the little frenzy popper's got a bit of a cup face, so I can make a little bit more splash and a bit more movement for those fish to find that uh, lure in. Perfect, and, and just alternate till you find a pattern on any given day. Yep. And then when you start, you stick to it. You stick to it. We found so far today that the, that the cultiva has been doing really well, but now it's sort of like half time, change sides, up comes the wind. Yep. I'll probably start fishing the frenzy a bit more now because I'm gonna need to create a little bit more schmush yep. and let those fish find that lure. Perfect. And different style lures, obviously different shapes, require different rod work in your retrieve? Absolutely. If you did the same sort of blooping sort of retrieve with a, with a cup face on a sliding type of lure, it's, it's going to dart, but it's not going to be a nice smooth run. It's going to be a bit too erratic. The idea of the what they call a zipping ziggy is that a nice gentle rod twitch, rod twitch wind, and it makes that lure work nice just like that. The other one, you pull the rod tip, splashes. You can still zip and ziggy it a bit, but you get a totally different action. And as well, the tip down, bloop, throws more of that water. Absolutely. More noise. More noise. Sometimes is good, sometimes is bad. That's why we have them both rigged. If we find that we're not getting much with too much noise, go to subtle. If the subtle isn't working, you're getting a few smooshes, but not quite the commitment, then we might go to a bit more noise to get that reaction strike. And get out in the water for the first time. If you're not necessarily sure, hey, what lure do I start with? Just have a look in the water. Like, let your eyes show you, there's a lot of garbing smooching around today like little V lines Absolutely. on the water. Great time to throw something like the cultiva that looks the perfect imitation of your little gars. Absolutely, those little gar fish are, are probably why we're doing so well today because there's thousands of them in the system. They're about that long and they're just darting just under the surface and you know, that is just a, a prime wounded little gar fish like something's already had a go at it so it's a bit wounded, a bit dazed and wandering around on the surface which makes it an easy meal. All right, all right we've got two, two options. You try one, I'll try the other, eh? Let's log it in. Oh yes! Go, go, go! <laughs> <You> just <laughs> lost control! <laughs> lost control. Uh, like yeah, I was saying, no, there's chunky it's bits all through there. there. No, he's got to keep that head up. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. Nice fish. Oh, no. We were just talking about lure colours. I mean, Jace fishes this place a lot. And I was throwing a surface lure with a very oh. white belly and Jace has been chucking around the gold gold and orange and I said what colour do you like and he said I like the gold around here and I think that was maybe first cast with the that gold was, so sometimes first cast a bit of local knowledge and maybe just contrast something a bit of flash a bit of contrast you know something they can see against maybe a white sky and uh, the benefits of local knowledge sometimes mate. Well, that noise. Thanks Jase. I mean first well of course for a couple of small ones these are my first legal baffle jack. Nice isn't it? Fantastic. Sneaking up in the Sneaking uh, mate we are and we poly. certainly are sneaking. Dead and quiet. these days, get the right tools on board and you enjoy your fishing much more and it becomes more effective. You know, we've got a boat that's sneaking over shallows up here 
and it's allowing us to explore. One of the nicest things about fishing mate, exploring, seeing new fish and catching them on surface. How good is that? Mate, that is beautiful. I tell you what, that the only thing that would be better than, than that is if I catch it. <laughs> Start out the day, Jase, you know, run out tide, we're sitting around the rock walls and that, chasing fish and getting them there. Now that the tide's turned, sun's up a bit higher, we're hitting these other banks that were shallow at the start of the day. You know, weed beds and stuff like that, and that, that you find the fish do move around a lot in some of your jack systems. Oh, absolutely. But it's one of those things, a lot of people go and target their mangrove jack on the rocks, and they're there. A lot of the times when the tide's low, that's the deepest part. Yep. So they go and station there, and you can catch a few of them there. But they hunt, a lot of the fish are hunting actively in the shallows. Once that tide changes, you know, the, the rock bars aren't the primary yep. spot to go and target them. There's other places to catch them. Other places. Just All that, got to keep it up here. Just to keep it up here. When you, when you have a look at the bait fish, they're, they're right up in the shallows. They're looking for food and places yep. to hide. You know, if, if you want to feed, feed, you don't go to a hardware store, do you? You go to where the food is, and that's, where the, that's why the jacks are up in those shallows. They're looking for something to eat, yep. and that's where the food is, so that's where they are. Fair enough to find the food. Find the fish. Find the fish. Had to one there, didn't they? Had to oh. be. Bushka. Fear some set of chompers and shoulders. Doesn't matter how big they are, mate. No, they uh, they just go from naught to 100 in very small time. That's the reason. Now the tackle, you've got to think through the tackle you use on these guys a bit, whether it's bait caster or spin. We're both throwing around spin outfits today because we're casting relatively light surface lures. Jason and I are both using tackle in about that three to six kilo range. 10 to 12 pound braid, 20 pound liters. Uh, you just got to give them a bit of credit. They know how to dust you up very quickly, don't they, Jace? They certainly do, as we found out today. Uh-huh. Anyway, beautiful fish. Oh, thanks for that. They just hold for that second and they go, I'm going to wait you on the way. Yes. That's brilliant, mate. What an awesome session. Fantastic, eh? Coming here with a good mate, Southeast Queensland Estuary. Well known for their jacks, especially if you get up the top reaches where not a lot of people get to go. You know, water's clear enough to chuck surface lures, and how exciting is that? Getting in the, yeah. get in the right spot, twitch, 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 boom. There, we had a lot of twitch, twitch, boom. That last one, I've got to say, what a great way to end the day. A nice little, it was just perfect. Bit of shade, bit of run in underneath that log. Nigel just flicked that little cult heaver in there. He hadn't even tweaked it. it didn't, you didn't even get a flick. No, flick. He no. just landed, went splash, boof, straight on. Game on. Way to get awesome. the adrenaline going. What a great day. I'd like to say we've got to go home now, but I reckon just after that one, one or two casts are in order. <laughs> Sneak a couple in. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That's better. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Go, Benny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm a curl tower. It's just about to change and finally the bite. Oh, you're puffing, mate. I might tell people what you're doing. We out off the about 75 miles to the west of Sajuna at the moment. The crew from Why Not Charters, and we're jigging for kings and some of the other ooglies which hang around here. And Benny and I are chucking some of the Z-Man plastics on TT two ounce jig heads, and we've loaded up with a venom range of jigging rods. I think I've got the three to five PE. Benny's on the one to three. He's 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 opted for the hard challenge of uh, go light on some big ooglies around here. I think we have colour soon, so I'll let him uh, puff it and get it in for you. Coming up. All right. Here we go. Alrighty. <laughs> Trying out the new little plastics from uh, 
Z-Man, he's a curl tail. Got me first, South Old Samson. A couple of meters off the bottom. It's a nice slow retrieve. I think with these curl tails, the object is trying to use them nice and slow. You know, they, they got a tendency to wrap, so this fish obviously liked it, so I'll just keep that pattern going and we'll get him back in the drink, eh? The tree I'm using today to use these curl tail plastics is, like I said before, they've got a tendency to wrap, so it's more like a nice, slow, sort of hopping retrieve. You're just getting that curl tail sort of dart up, dart back down, dart up. So it's just sort of a constant sort of slow wind and a little hop, as you would sort of any other salt plastic over a flat, over sort of a sandbar, you're just doing that hop, but it's just more of a constant retrieve. And the fish has just hit that on the drop, <laughs> and I'm on. <laughs> He feels all right too. Oh, 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 yep. No, I just got a bite behind me. And this one's a bit angry because he's hooking me up high. Oh. It's the beauty about using a good quality jig stick. Put the power when you need it. Using the spin Wilson Venom. And look, I've turned him now. He's coming up all right. Was it? Big Trevally. Big Trevally. That's a cracker. That's a chunk, Benny. It is a chunk of fish. The boys have been telling me it's a pretty good fish for these waters. Just bang me on the drop. I wasn't even jigging it. I wasn't doing much to the action. It's just free falling back down and rolling back down. Nice thing about the colour too, Benny. Nice white colour, deeper water, a lot of contrast. Some of these plastics glow as well. So it gives you a lot of options in terms of colour range. And yeah, mate, lots of nice action. That's it, mate. Put it on with a nice heavy jig head just to get your depth right. You don't want to fish it too heavy or too light, you know? You've got to get that right. You don't want to be fishing shallow water, banging up a big big jig head when you don't really need it. So it's choosing the right jig head and the right plastic to result in a good fish. All right, Nigel, I reckon we get the jig head out. Mate. Spear time. Good work. That's all right. Let's go back again and get some more action. don't necessarily just have to have that traditional retrieve. You can do the fast fast wind, fast as you can, or you can just slow roll it, as Benny was doing to catch a couple of those fish before. At the end of the day, just work any given day on the water as best you can, try and find out what's tuning those fish in. Some days it's a jerky retrieve, sometimes it's a slow retrieve. Benefit of the plastic, the world's your oyster. You can try any retrieve you want. You'll find one in there that's gonna work. No, another good one. <laughs> on the pause, eh? rip, 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 pause, clunk. <sighs> Probably, while he's beating all that. Wes, Dicky Wes, good job. Thanks, mate. There you go. It's one of the 18 inch Streak Z style plastics from Z Man. It's one of their minnow style plastics. And he's just said, Here you go. There it is. I'm spitting it out and I'm going back. See you later. And there you go. That's what he's eating. Eight inch soft plastic. I guess one of the beauties using soft plastics, people at home might be going, well, why aren't you using metal jigs like the other guys in the boat? The metal jigs obviously work. Benefit with the plastic is you can fish them a lot of different ways. You can sometimes slow your retrieve, like Benny's been doing, and because he's got a curl tail on it, it's still wiggling and it still looks like something worth eating. Even that minnow style plastic darts and weaves in the water like a bait fish that's trying to get away. Nice and soft as well, so when a fish does chomp on that, it feels like the real thing, so if he misses it on the first go, often encourages him to come back and have another crack because it does feel like the real thing. Beauty of these Z-Man plastics, highly durable. Get a lot of fish on one plastic. They stay on the jigging very well. That's just another option. If you are out jigging, don't ignore the soft plastics. While Benny's using the Wilson's Venom range of jigging rods in the one to three PE, I've loaded up with the three to five PE just to hopefully tame some of the big brutes that you find around here. Match it up with a Stella 10,000. I've got the Power Pro braid. Helps me change its color every seven and a half meters, help me know which depth I'm fishing. And Benny's a bit jealous. I've got something pretty special and yellow on the end of the rod. It's a Cushit, which is bought out by the Nomad guys. And it's, if you don't have a gimbal on board, this thing <laughs> helps out reduce the pain <laughs> on good fish. 
This is what we came here for, to get ironed out. Said to Benny about two drops ago, I've just come to South Australia to get levelled out by one of these brutes that live here. Go, mate, I'll go around you. Uh, uh, oh. Got a puff and a pan going on, mate. You doing oh, mate, all right there? I'm hurting. Talk to Cord at the Wilson's factory. And he tests these rods out. And he deadlifts 40 kilo weights on these things to make sure that when you're out in the water and locked and loaded, stuff doesn't let you down. It's a fair chance I'm gonna wear out before this rod does. These big fish, you just gotta just try and work them bit by bit without panicking them too much. They don't like getting hurt. You put strain on them, they're very good at just working your back down to bottom. So it's a case of just work them up slowly, bit by bit. Making some ground on him, man, or what? No. Oh, I'm in a world of <laughs> he hurt. He's making you hurt. A lot of puffing and panting going on. Making some ground on him? Oh, I don't know. Some, sometimes, yes. And then he takes it back. Big fish. Woo! Well done, Wes. Hey! Oh! He's hurting. hurting! Well done. Benny, this is what we came here for. Well done, mate. <laughs> Hurt yourself. Oh, I'm hurting. Arms and back. I'm going to pop this little plastic out if I can. Mate, that's the damager. The old Mino style. TT uh, jig head held in there just fine. That's too. a magnificent job. Two ounce jig head. A lot of, press, a lot of pressures on that hook, mate. She ain't even bending at all. No, 120 pound braid. 120 pound leader. Sorry. 80 pound braid. 120 pound leader. Magic fish, magic. And What's the scale in your kingies you've caught? This has got to be up there in your biggest tank. Oh, I reckon he's pretty, pretty close to my biggest, mate. Done well, mate. Absolutely unreal. And aren't they majestic fish? And just shows you the kind of tackle you need to tame them. These guys don't come in easy. They're going to hurt you every step of the way. So we've come armed with the right equipment. Tough braid, tough lines, the venom range. Which Cord said, mate, you're going to hurt everything you hook. And he's right. He just didn't tell me how much they were going to hurt me. Yeah, it's done the job, mate. Look at that. Unbelievable. Uh, all righty. Well, that's what we come here for. Your Where team, we, mate. I reckon we get a couple, couple of picks and slide him back in, eh? Done deal. make sure we give this fish every chance of survival. We'll put a weight on him. We're gonna drop him down deep before we release that weight. Thanks, Elise. To find out more about AFN or the tackling gear used in tonight's show, visit our website afn.com.au or like our Facebook page AFN Fishing and Outdoors.